Hi, I'm Kendra Havens, a program manager on the .NET team. In this video, I'm going to show you what's new in .NET Core and Visual Studio 2017. In case you haven't been following the .NET blog, I'm going to catch you up on our .NET Core announcements. First, I'll start with a recap of our recent news, then I'll go over the LTS and current train structure, as well as .NET and Docker. I'll also go over updates on .NET tooling, like the adoption of MS build-based project files and new templates. Then I'll wrap up with a VS 2017 and CLI tooling demo. So what's new in .NET Core? First, let's recap recent events. .NET Core 1.1 was released in November. It now runs on more operating systems, including Linux Mint 18, OpenSUSE 42.1, Mac OS 10.12, and Windows Server 2016. We added a few APIs and bug fixes. We also have a new docs website, docs.microsoft.com. It's open source, meaning we accept and encourage content creation by the community. Now let's talk about LTS and current release trains. If you've been following our blog and release schedule, you may already be familiar with the release train concept we've introduced. This concept of release change is used in a lot of open source projects. All the new exciting feature work is done in the current branch. This branch gets the most bug fixes and developer attention. The LTS, or long-term branch, gets only the necessary security updates and patches for expected behavior. LTS is maintained for stability and will eventually get the new features created in the current branch, but only after being tested in real scenarios. Now let's talk about .NET and Docker. With every .NET Core release, we push Docker images up to Docker Hub. We provide multiple images for different scenarios. We have images for both Debian and Windows Nano Server. We have images for both release trains, that means both 1.1 and 1.0. We have SDK images that include the runtime and the latest tools, as well as lighter weight images that only contain the .NET Core runtime. To view these, you can go to hub.docker.com slash r slash Microsoft slash .NET. To get .NET Core tools, you can go to dot.NET slash core. .NET Core tools are 1.0. What does this mean? This means our tooling is joining the framework and runtime as a fully supported release. So for the last couple years, you've watched us develop .NET Core cross-platform tooling as previews. The .NET Core tools have finally shipped as 1.0 RTM. Let's talk about project files. We've adopted MS build-based project files, otherwise known as .csproj for .NET Core. MS build is a key component of the .NET tools ecosystem. Tools, scripts, and VS extensions that target MS Build now extend to working with .NET Core. The switch to MS Build enables you to reference portable class libraries from .NET Core projects and .NET standard libraries from .NET framework projects. MS Build can also reliably build large projects. In preview of releases, .NET Core tools worked with project.json project files. Customers liked project.json, but they wanted their projects to work with existing .NET code. That didn't work well with project.json, so we moved to the proven MS build project and build system. To facilitate the migration of your projects, we created the .NET migrate command. This is included in Visual Studio 2017.NET Core tooling. To learn more about migration requirements, please visit docs.microsoft.com .NET and search for the migrate command. Now I'll tell you about updates to .NET Core CLI tools. The .NET new experience got a makeover. Command line syntax was added to make it more expressive, meaning you can now execute something like .NET new console-f .NET Core app 1.1 to express which .NET framework version you'd like to initialize the project with. For example, if you had both 1.0 and 1.1 on your machine. You can now run .NET new SLN to create an empty solution file and add multiple projects to it. You can think of solution files as the replacement to your global.json files. The new syntax for initializing templates is very useful. .NET new MVC will initialize an ASP.NET web app. It used to be "-t web." But if I wanted to see what MVC templates I had to choose from, I could instead run .NET new MVC "-help." This will list all the properties I can use to initialize the template with. For example, one of those is no authentication template for MVC. To, to initialize that, I now know I can run .NET new MVC dash AU none. In the future, we envision templates to be something anyone can create and share via NuGet or as a folder. 
If you want to participate or contribute to this, you can visit the .NET repo on GitHub slash templating. You can get the .NET Core SDK for your favorite OS at .NET slash core. Now I'm going to take you to a Visual Studio 2017 and .NET Core demo. For the Visual Studio 2017 demo, I want to show you how to use the .NET Migrate. Uh, so right here, I have a project that I initialized with our Preview 2 tools. Uh, so as you can see, it's project.json based. There's our project.json file. Um, so let's say I just installed Visual Studio 2017. I'm going to open my older project in the Visual Studio 2017, and it immediately recognizes that this was made with the old tooling and offers uh, to help me upgrade. So I'm going to click OK. And OK again. So as you can see, it comes back with a migration report. The green check marks are a good sign. And uh, I can go over here to my project file and right click and open the folder in the file explorer. Uh, so here you can see it's csproj base now, but it also has this backup file. And this one contains your project.json. So you're not going to lose any of your um, old files there. Uh, so with this new file, let's check out the csproj. I'll go ahead and select edit. Uh, so as you can see, the csproj is very slimmed down. We worked very hard to make this tooling much more accessible. And lastly, I want to take you through some of my favorite websites. I go to docs.microsoft.com and I can search the migrate command to take me to migrate documentation. Also, all of our documentation on docs.microsoft.com has these little edit buttons by it, and they can take you directly to that page on GitHub. So you can actually click the edit button here and make pull requests. Another page I frequent is the .NET Core installation guide. That's at microsoft.com slash net slash core. You might see some familiar faces there to help you get set up. Next, to keep up on all of the important updates, I go to the .NET blog. Uh, we have really interesting blog posts that are often the week in .NET, so lots of community involvement. Um, .NET recently turned 15 as well, which is pretty cool, 15 years old. Um, the next site I talked about in my uh, presentation was hub.docker.com. You can go to Microsoft slash .NET to view the .NET uh, images. I want to thank the community for their awesome involvement on GitHub and thank you for watching.